If you ever feel like saving money in 2023 is an uphill battle, you are not alone. Between inflation, shrinkflation, a tough job market, consumer culture, our dollar just doesn't stretch as much as it used to. Today I'll share three phenomenons that make saving in 2023 so difficult, and I'll also share what I do to overcome these challenges. My first point is consumer culture. I feel like in the US we live very much in a consumer culture that encourages spending and instant gratification. We're being told to live in the moment, and that usually means buying whatever makes us happy in that moment. When we're constantly surrounded by people who are buying the next newest thing, if we're not careful, it can be difficult to prioritize saving. And there's definitely a balance we should strike between living in the moment and saving our money. Something we need to recognize more is that the people who are pushing you to buy a certain product are probably trying to monetize that product or have already monetized it. And not to shame anyone because I partake also. I have affiliate links in all of the description boxes of my videos. But when you understand the motivations behind why someone is pushing a product on you so hard in a way that seems so organic, generally this is via social media like TikTok or Instagram or YouTube even, in that case, it might just take away the appeal of the product just a tad. At least as a consumer, it does for me. Ads are everywhere, especially on social media where these ads are so well hidden. Sometimes I don't even realize I'm watching an ad until five to 10 seconds into a short form video. And I definitely get influenced. I get influenced by makeup products, by skincare products. But whenever these urges come up for me to buy something, I will just add it to my wish list. I'll think about it for a few days. And if I forget it after a few days, then that probably means I never needed it to begin with. If I still find myself really wanting the item after thinking about it for a few days, I'll keep it on my wish list and I'll just think about it some more. I find about half of the items on my wish list become less of a priority by the second month that they're on the wish list. I usually don't want them as badly as I did when I first discovered them. Also, as I think about these items on my wish list, it also gives me time to think about and do research into whether that product is the best product in its category. And then if it's not, then I can find the product that is the best in its category. Speaking of wish list, one item on my wish list is you becoming a subscriber if you are not already. If you like this video so far, please go ahead and like and subscribe so I can figure out which videos are relevant to you and I can create more of them. Going to my next point, there are also economic factors outside of our control that affect our ability to save. If you think things are getting more expensive, you are not imagining it. Inflation has been at the forefront of almost everyone's mind. In June of 2022, the consumer price index was up 9.1% compared to June of 2021, which is at a 40 year high. More recently in September of 2023, the consumer price index was up 3.7% compared to September of last year. And if you don't know, the consumer price index is a metric for measuring a basket of goods, which include typical household items like grocery, clothes, cost of rent, cost of transportation. They track the same basket to see how the cost of these items have grown on a monthly basis. And there's a whole process and there are more details, but that is basically the gist. Even when prices are rising, there are still ways to shop frugally. If you have the space and the means to, buying in bulk can be cheaper at a per unit cost. Because I live alone, I can't always finish the products I buy in bulk, so I almost always buy store brand when there is that option too. It's almost always the cheapest option compared to name brand items. I always look at the ingredients to compare with the name brand product, and sometimes they're even identical, sometimes they're off a little bit, but the savings are sometimes up to 40%. Over a year of buying store brand versus name brand products, the savings really do add up. Shrinkflation is the reduction of a size of a product while the brand keeps the same price. So instead of increasing the cost of a product, the company gives the consumer less product for the same price. This has been happening for years, but I think it's become more apparent more recently because more brands are starting to partake in this. It's an easy way for brands to increase profit margins while seemingly making the product the same for the customer. So if you see a brand that has rebranded their product recently, check to see if they're selling less volume than they did before. I feel like this is generally how they get away with shrinkflation because they distract the customers with new branding while putting less volume in their packaging. There are also psychological factors that might cause you to spend more money. Studies have shown that spending money does make people happy. That's why retail therapy is a thing. But recognizing that retail therapy doesn't bring lasting happiness can help us avoid the trap of overspending. There's a difference between spending well within your budget to spark joy within your day versus a bigger ticket purchase that you may not even need or truly want and that you can't continuously afford to make on a daily or weekly basis. Anytime I have purchased a more expensive item off of my wish list, it does make me happy. 
but eventually my overall level of happiness goes back down to my baseline level. This phenomenon is known as hedonic adaptation, and it applies for both positive and negative life events or life changes. Eventually, we all return to a baseline level of happiness. I remember two occasions in my life when I felt the highest level of happiness from a lifestyle increase. One was back when I was 11 and I got a keyboard phone with unlimited texting. I think for a week straight, I woke up excited every morning that I could text my friends and not be limited to the messages that I could send. The other was when I was 22 and I got my very first apartment all to myself. So my own kitchen, my own bathroom, my own refrigerator. And I distinctly remember when I walked through my apartment the first few times that I felt the same way as I felt back when I was 11 and I got my Samsung Smiley with unlimited texting. In no other time of my life have I felt that level of joy from lifestyle increase. And I can tell you that the happiness from those experiences have been brought down to baseline level again. I live alone now. I definitely appreciate and enjoy having my own space. And I still text my friends as much as I want. In fact, I have an even cooler phone now. I have internet and I have cool apps to play with, but these are all normal occurrences now. And that's hedonic adaptation. If you find it's difficult to save, you might be falling prey to consumer culture. When it seems like everyone else is spending, you may be influenced to do so as well. This cuts into the amount of money that you can save, but think about who is pushing you to spend this money and whether that's really benefiting them or if it's actually gonna benefit you. Recent economic conditions have made it more difficult to save with inflation and shrinkflation, but being more purposeful with your buying choices, like buying store brand can save a lot of money in the long run as well. And finally, psychological factors like hedonic adaptation, which I just mentioned, may also influence us to spend more money. It might be helpful to remember that while buying something short-term gives us happiness, eventually our level of happiness goes back down to baseline level. That's all I have for today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you like this video, you might also like this video here on five money mistakes you're making and how to fix them.